horror asims has become a relatively large genre with failures and successes all over the place but what is the actual state of the actual games itself and we're going to break down pretty much everything you need to know about horror asims whether you're brand new to the genre or you're just coming back or you've been in it like I have since almost day one. But before we do that, welcome back, Daddies and Ghost Beaters. And if you're new to the channel, I am Old Head Gaming. And of course, if you want to keep up to date on all the latest horror game news, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. So let's talk about the different classifications of games. Now, every game that's coming out or has come out, I don't know, in the last four years has been, quote unquote, the Dead by Daylight killer. And let's be honest, as we are closing in on the anniversary coming up in a couple of months, the eighth anniversary of Dead by Daylight, it's just not happening. At this point, the genre is what it is, and no one is catching Dead by Daylight in viewership, in money, in content, in crossovers, in player base. It's just not happening. So let's get that right off the table. Dead by Daylight is going to always be the benchmark. Whether you like the gameplay mechanics of Dead by Daylight, as a horror asim, it is the only one that is tried and true, and it's the only one that has stood the test of time. And it stood the test of time for multiple reasons. Because it's only had the one game mode until they started kind of teasing in some alternate versions over the last few months with Lights Out, and then the Oni Foot Fetish mode, my little Oni, but the reason it's done well is it's found ways to capitalize on its player base, whether it was having a good original game, bringing in Halloween, of course, which set it apart from most of the games at the time, which brought us Michael Myers and Laurie Strode, and then have continually added tons of different characters across the horror universe. And this has made Dead by Daylight not only successful, but have a wide appeal to different people. Also, they have never missed on always having a battle pass, aka the Rift. They've never missed on having tons and tons of cosmetics you can purchase or earn for your characters. And they have made it multifaceted. And that's what a lot of games miss on, unfortunately. Now, now that we got out of the way that Dead by Daylight is always just going to be it. Like... I hate to say it, and I know a lot of ASIM fans are going to disagree with me on that because they want Dead by Daylight just to be done and over with, but it isn't. And I still play Dead by Daylight to this day, even when I take some time off like I have since the Blood Moon event has ended, where I've taken a couple of weeks off just because there's nothing really coming until 31.5 drops on the 23rd. But here's the categories. Obviously, Thriving would be Dead by Daylight. And there's really not much else I would put into that category except Ghostbusters. Hillfonics Ghostbusters has been a steady runner for going on two years now in this October with a roadmap that is just kind of keeps going. The player base has never been gigantic, but it does cover all platforms, including the Switch and Steam release earlier this year. And they just kind of have it figured out and they keep it rolling. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, I would probably put in Thriving, and this is the only reason why. I was talking to Pixels about this last evening when, before I recorded this, and I was already having these thoughts of what the difference is going to be by getting rid of Sumo. Sumo probably was holding back Texas Chainsaw pretty badly. Like, look at the release they just had with Virginia. Like, unexcusable that the first time you bring out a character in five months and, like, the entire thing is broken beyond belief. But I have hope that they're going to turn the corner. And I have to say, I think in bringing in Black Tower, a company that is familiar in the ASIM world, very similar to how Ilphonic is, will help them. Now, I feel like this is kind of putting them on thriving, is kind of teetering, because I swear if they miss on this, they're probably done. Now, I know Gunn, especially Wes, has made it very clear that he has plans for the one-year anniversary coming up in August, and I'm hoping that they actually hit it. Is it a game I enjoy? No, but that doesn't mean I don't want it to succeed. The second category is coming back, and this seems to be a big one right now. We have the return of Predator Hunting Ground. It's just got its first update in two years, and it's now getting new content starting later this year. I think it's either like August, September, we're supposed to see the next Yautja show up. And we also have the return of the last year in June. And that is interesting in its own right. It's also using a much better model than it's ever done before in version one and two, which have both failed. Let's be cautiously optimistic on a game that has already missed twice. 
But I do have hopes that they are going a different path. I feel like they want to be the Dead by Daylight of the lesser known franchises. Like they're starting out with Troma's Toxie coming in. You're going to get a Toxieville map. Like I feel like that's a good way to go. And they could be this type of place where we get to see this crossovers of maybe stuff like Bubba Hotep, which I would have thought would have came to Evil Dead, Reanimator other movies from full moon or trauma maybe even this would be a place where we finally get phantasm or art the clown like you can make it the dead by daylight of like indie films and i think that's a really good place to go winnie the pooh might be a good one as the poony verse is exploding with all sorts of different types of characters from bambi to peter pan like, I feel like this is an opportunity to be really good for the last year. If they can really nail this, I think this will be a great thing for them. The third group is languishing. Absolutely no idea where they're going, and they're just kind of there. And that's where Evil Dead is right now. And I hate to say it because we've come back to playing Evil Dead because, in my opinion, it is probably the most fun ASIM to play. But anything going on with it, there isn't anything. Like... We got double XP boosted, and there's been hints of possibly an update. Now, I'm hoping to see Evil Dead go from the languishing category into returning. I feel like with the new owner of Saber, which is yet to be revealed, so I'm wondering if that deal just isn't done yet, or they're just finalizing it. Which is kind of peculiar, because we heard almost instantly that Take-Two has bought Gearbox from Embracer. So I wonder if this deal is just not fully finished yet that they haven't announced the details and i feel like when a new owner gets a chance to look at what dead by daylight and other asims are doing and the fact that they're sitting on evil dead which hasn't been turned off the double xp has seemed to increase the player base again because the queue times aren't terrible at all Hopefully we see something change. And then, of course, the fourth one is coming soon. And we do have quite a few of those as well. We have the indie game from Beer Games, Carnival Hunt, which was a Kickstarter darling, but we haven't heard a whole lot, so there is some concerns there. We have Killer Clowns from Outer Space dropping next month in early release in June 4th globally. We have the last year coming back on June 25th in early access, dropping later this year in full release. And, like, there's some games that could really do well in the genre i love asims i've always loved asims and i don't think the market's going away i don't think the player base is going away but I, I think players have gotten to the point where we want to see our asims more dbd-esque we want to have these options to buy cosmetics we want these options to have a battle pass or a rift or whatever you want to call it because typically what happens with asim players is we want to grind those characters whether it's prestige system whether it's unlocking stuff whether it's earning cosmetics whether it's earning in-game currency whether it's getting changes and we spend a lot of times with those games like take for example evil dead there's still characters when the game stopped that didn't even have a second cosmetic which in my opinion is absolutely asinine like especially with one of those characters being ruby ruby would have absolutely printed money i once did a count through the entire series and i think we came up with like 47 different outfits she wore during three seasons of ash versus Evil Dead. she had the most looks the most variants and would have made an absolute ton of money but saber made sure they never put a store in unfortunately texas chainsaw has done the same thing they just drop these character packs every now we have another one dropping for anna coming up in a couple of weeks you buy them there it is i don't think there's anything wrong with looking at a successful model and taking advantage of it like dead by daylight walked so everyone else could run they made tons of mistakes almost went under until they decided to basically put all their chips Pushed them into the table on Halloween and said, we'll see what happens. The game was exclusive on Steam. It has very small player base. And it didn't explode until Michael Myers and Laurie Strode came to the game. They made mistakes. They learned from them. They perfected their system. They turned things up to 11. And they ran. And now it's a well-oiled machine where pretty much every Tuesday or Wednesday, you have new cosmetics coming out. Every few months, you have a new chapter or mid-chapter coming out. Crossovers out the wazoo. Like, I'll be honest, Gear 7 
in my opinion, content wise, was the best version of Dead by Daylight. Which from the moment it started with a pretty solid original chapter all the way to the conclusion where we just ended. I, I've loved the content. I've loved what we've done. Uh, I mean, Nicolas Cage alone would have made it a win for me. But I want to see horror asims do more like this. Or even like Ghostbusters, which is taking advantage of stuff that's around them. For example, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire came out. They took the advantage to not only... Do something with the movie, not only bring cosmetics, bring a new ghost, but they then rolled out a year two roadmap to coincide with it. That is taking advantage of your marketing. And a lot of companies are just ignoring that. Evil Dead did the same thing where they ignored Evil Dead Rise when everyone was screaming from the rooftops to bring in, you know, Beth and Ellie. And this is what you have to do when you look at companies that are striving and doing stuff and continuing versus the companies that are not, this is what's going on. Now, I hope every ASIM succeeds. I really do. I want to have games that I can play. I'm a type of gamer who might want to play the same game three or four days in a row and then just mix it up because I need something different. And I want to have that option by having ASIMs survive. We see too many fall to the wayside. We see some that even try to come back like Friday the 13th and then get a cease and desist. I didn't talk about them specifically because I knew from the get-go they were never going to get that rehash of Friday the 13th on the PC. And as much as I would have loved to see it come back and be able to be played again for funsies, we knew it wasn't going to happen. But Friday the 13th is the only of the games that has a legitimate excuse why it's gone other than just bad management. And I don't want to see bad management take out more ASIMs. I want to see ASIMs move forward, do new cool stuff, like adding new game modes, like adding new characters, like adding new cosmetics. Because let's be honest, one thing ASIM players love is new stuff. Because if you're playing the same character that you've mained for years, maybe you don't want to stare at the same version of that character game in and game out. You want to be able to switch the skin. You want to change the cosmetics. You want to have something to earn for them. And this is what we need to see from our games. We need to ask for more. We need to expect more. And hopefully we see more games going from either failing or languishing to succeeding. That's what I want to see with the return of the last year. And of course, Predator Hunting Ground. That's what I want to see with other games that are already doing well, like Ghostbusters and Dead by Daylight. And that's what I want to see with the launch of new games like Carnival Hunt, like Killer Clowns from Outer Space. And that's what I want to see with a game that is struggling a little bit, but maintaining somewhat. It's in a weird place, Texas Chainsaw. And hopefully with Sumo gone, they will move into that group as well. Now, I've talked a lot about ASIMs. I want to hear your thoughts. Where do you think the genre is? Is it in a good place? Or are we basically just riding on the backs of Dead by Daylight? Do you think more games could return? Do you think things could look bigger and better for the genre? Or do you think a lot of games that are coming back, Predator, Carnival Hunt, last year, are just going to flame out relatively quickly and it's going to shrink back to basically just being Dead by Daylight? I want to hear all your thoughts what you think of the system of horror ASIMs, where we're at at this moment, and what we can expect for the rest of 2024 into 2025. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. As always, thank you for watching, and later, mates.